Okay, welcome everybody. This is not only the final lecture of Adam about knots, operator algebras, and physics, but it's also the last lecture of the whole final semester. So Adam, you are the terminator. The Zoom is yours, the floor is yours. Take it away. Thank you. So I want to uh, come back to what we discussed last time. Um, we we uh, are discussing the transform model, and then uh, we generalize it to the notion of a ski model, and then uh, suddenly we end up um, uh, well we connected that to notion of character varieties. So that's what we discussed uh, at the end of my second talk, and let's continue here. And so this is a very general discussion which. Uh, goes beyond the uh, scope of log theory. I think this is a very useful construction in, in representation theory. Let gamma be a finitely generated group. G be an algebraic group. We do everything over C, although um, everything can be done over other fields which are uh, algebraically closed. And, uh, and then we have this uh, universal representation. So then what we proved that there is an algebra called rep gamma G. And, uh, Universe. I remember you were denoting in just by R of gamma. Oh, thank you. That's writing. That was a good, good reminder. There's this universal representation, which I called rho u for universal, going into the same group, but with coefficients here. Yes, and it had the property that for every other representation row, for every other representation row, into G into some, with some coefficients A, so A is a C algebra, whatever, whichever algebra you like, that exists. Well, there exists uh, algebra homomorphism Uh, in fact, unique, uh, going to A, such that uh, this diagram commutes. So No, no, but this homomorphism is to, like some F, and then you have G of F, yes, you apply this. Yeah, correct, yes. That's why I, yeah, I, I can write those tables here. That's why I wrote them separately. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did some examples. Um, you can check, um, if you forgot, you can check the previous lecture. We did some example, uh, for example, uh, the free group uh, where this had um, eight generators, four for generator for SL2. This would have four generators for each generator of gamma with some relations which make this homomorphism, group homomorphism possible. And uh, so, in particular, now I want to define I want to now define um, the variety rep. Nope, I call it home. Oh, let's do it. Let's do it nicely. Um, gamma G to be the scarily spec M of R gamma G. <laughs> okay, I can. Okay, 
I managed to close it. So this is this um, spectrum of maximal set of maximal ideas in this ring with this extra information about uh, about um, uh, near potents and uh, well, and I claim that the points of it represent representations. Points of it represent representations of gamma into G. Yes, what let's explain that. So let's take a maximum idea here. So this maximum idea induces induces a homomorphism from it work from R into a quotient by M, which is what? Which is really the same as C. And uh, that induces what? Well, you have this homomorphism there. That induces a map from here to here. Well, this is just G. And then you have the universal representation. So what, what am I explaining here is that every maximal ideal, a point here, induces homomorphism to C. We're combined with universal representation, induces the representation from gamma to G. And furthermore, by universality, every G representation of gamma is of this form. So therefore, every representation, G representation of gamma, is a point in spec M. But just a stupid question, gamma is a discrete group. Correct. Or gamma is a group without topology. Uh, Which means discrete. Yeah, you can, you can, you can, you can, yeah, you can set discrete topology if you like on it. So, yeah, so as a set of points, uh, this, those points, really represent all possible representations of gamma. And somehow, magically, this, those points, as I described uh, earlier, well, form an algebraic set. I'm a little bit confused about your uh, usage of the letter G. G is like a functor. This is the one meaning. But the other meaning is that there is some fixed group yeah. over complex numbers, yes? So That's right. So yeah, so I mentioned this last time. This I, I threw those words affine group scheme, mm -hmm. and uh, so for SLN, it can take SLN C, but then SLN also makes sense for any algebra. Mm -hmm. SLN A also makes sense. You can ask uh, about the rigorous path from one to the other. Mm -hmm. Presumably, you do that, and that can be done. So. Yes, so in the definition of home, you, mean, you really mean this one particular G over C, yes? Then that's why you are taking maximal ideas, then the quotient is just C and not some general range. Yes. Okay. So what's the path? So I guess you're asking about the path from this G to that. I think that now we'll see. Yeah, fine. Here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, yeah. In my notes, I may include some more comments about this on how to do that. All right. So, um, yes. So, so this is an algebraic set which describes all representations, classifies all representations of gamma into G called the presentation variety. And, um, you know, this variety may be non reduced. Non-reduced means that this ring may have non-zero new photons. And uh, it's it's a weird, it's a weird thing. I always catch up myself looking for a where I space or yes. <laughs> I noticed. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, I'm not supposed to do that, I guess. I can undo. No, no, don't touch anything here. That's fun. Well, I was I was going to do, I guess, go to new board. Ah, new board is. But maybe. Adam, just in case, can you tap to these two arrows? See with this because with a mouse it's this one. Can you just touch this one? Please? Yes. Okay, then it just disappeared and it's very simple. Or maybe it would be better to just use this one to to, to, what? to continue so that we can leave, leave some stuff stuff on. Is is that preferred style for those? Okay, well I can move it. No, go to anyone guys. All right, so there is an example by Lubotsky Majid. And they say the following, um, a, a permutation group on three elements acts, acts on Z3 by permuting the generators, and therefore it also acts on Z2 because this action preserves uh, uh, the, the, the set of homomorphisms into Z as well, uh, basically sending each, each of the generators Maybe I should just say sending E1, E2, E3 to one. So the kernel of it is E2 and S3 acts on it. And then there is this group, which is the uh, semi-direct product. So what is E1, E2, E3? These are the generators. Generators of Z3. But you view it as what, an additive group, right? Correct. So what does it mean to multiply them? Oh, no, I am not. I'm sending them all to one in this homomorphism. All of them. That's right. And the kernel of that is Z2. And then S3 acts on the kernel. And then there is semi-direct product. And then, so they claim that home of this group, which is not too bad, for SL2 is non-reduced. And just a reminder again that that means that if you take those uh, relations, relations here, all the relations to define this uh, and this ring, remember, like again, for gamma being on two generators and G being SL2, we had to take uh, two times uh, four generators and some relations. And those relations actually define. A ring which has new potents, non zero new potents. So, um, because a priori, there's no reason to for it not to have new potents. All right, so this is the representation variety. Sorry, new potent, you mean that some power is zero or, or a square yes. is zero? No, some, some power. Some power. So which power is it in this example? Do uh, I, I don't know, and I don't know which element. Okay. Uh, because of course, not all elements will be important. Mm -hmm. So now, I want to now take, consider this universal representation. So I'm going back to the general setup. Up oh, and of course it doesn't make sense. Wait, I'm confused. Is it you said home gamma SL two C? Isn't it uh, supposed to land in an algebra, not a group? Oh, I think that uh, it's enough. using this uh, identification via something like Neustadt and Zad, and we we are saying that this. Scheme is non-reduced if the corresponding algebra is non-reduced, uh, meaning containing some. Yeah, but I was looking at this home, right? This and home yes. the scheme. So of an algebra. So C of that. Yeah, but you really mean group homomorphisms or, or what? Group homomorphisms, yes. And this is an algebraic set. This was the, the contents of my of my claim before. And so now I claim that if you take C of that, 
this by definition is going to be this this ring, this universal coefficient ring. And I claim this ring, or Lubotsky magic claim, this ring has non-zero new potency. So in algebraic geometry, we say that the corresponding variety is non-reduced. That's what it means. So in other words, literally, it does not make sense to say that there are some new potents in this home. You really, yeah, of course, yes, mm -hmm. yes. But I'm, I'm just wondering, uh, so I have a space of group homomorphisms, fine. How do I turn it into a polynomial ring? Well, this is a subject of um, what we discussed last class, last lecture. Um, if you, okay, if you remember, mm -hmm. for example, for, for, uh, for this being the free group on two generators, mm -hmm. Uh, well, uh, you know, how do you describe all such homomorphisms? X can go to a matrix of four entries, and Y can go to a matrix of four entries. So this is really a subspace of C8 with coordinates with coordinates uh, X, I, J, Y, I, J, ij can be one or two. Yeah, I think I see it now. So the point is that this is SL to C, but it's not just gamma to gamma prime. If I take two abstract discrete groups, that no, of course. make it into it. That's right. Okay. So what I think is that this is actually a group of, of um, well, to keep it simple, group of matrices. Right. We get and the n algebraic. Yeah, thank you so much. And then there are some relations. This is a relation between those x's and y's. On the left hand side, this is just a notation, C of this. Yes. So the notation, but we really mean this universal. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. So you, you can see that homomorphisms should correspond basically to certain choices of X and Ys, but certain rules have to be followed, uh, satisfied, certain conditions have to be satisfied for this homomorphism to exist. All right. So now, yes, I wanted to, to go to what I said here. Let me see if we can do it smart way. No, but let's try nonetheless. Oh, that's a invented a new move here. <laughs> right, the master move. Yes. <laughs> okay, let's erase this. So we have this universal representation. Now, let's take an n element of G. This is my row U, but I can conjugate it to G row U, G inverse, and we'll also go to the same ring. And, but this is a universal representation, the universal representation. So the only way, so this means that there must be a, a function, a homomorphism, a group homomorphism induced by some P sub J, P sub G, sorry, which is a, a algebra homomorphism Like this, homomorphism of, of coefficient by universality. Yes, and then uh, you can check that P of GH, well, it's nothing else than uh, P of H composed with P of G, also by universality, by uniqueness of this construction. And so this means that G. acts on R gamma G, which means that G acts on the dual object 
uh, which is um, this form. And it's not, not a mysterious action. Basically, it's action. If you think about it as space of representations, it's action by just conjugating representations by something from G. But this is like a proper way to do it. So we also take care of those hidden structure about new potents, uh, concerning new potents on, on this home space. All right. And uh, now that... Um, you know, and sorry, just a bit question. How does conjugation takes care of new potents? Well, you know, on a set of points, it will be very easy to define. Uh, I could just tell you that G conjugates representations, but I did it carefully. I defined for each G an homomorphism, automorphism of this algebra. So G acts on this algebra, which may have new potents, uh -huh. and that takes care of them. You know, then duality, I get this this action, because this is spec M of this algebra. So are you saying that if you act on a new potent, it's no longer new potent? No, I'm saying that preserves G acts on this algebra, which may have new potents. Uh -huh. And uh, this is action by isomorphism of this algebra. OK, so new potents remain new potents. And Correct. And, and OK, so it has confused by takes care of them. OK. Well, in a sense that if I tell you that G acts by conjugating representations, you can ask, well, how does it map the hidden information? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay, sorry. And um, sorry, what would happen if we just forget about this universal ring and just restrict the G action on this home? If we define this home, uh, you, you really want your home to be a scheme, yes? Together with That's the right. structure shift. Okay. Otherwise, I mean, you don't, depending on your purposes, if you don't want to, if you don't care about that, if you just care about points, then this is this is easy. This is easier. You know. Yeah. You don't need this story about this universal ring, yes? Correct. Right. Okay. And now, uh, in mathematics, in representation theory, we know that, uh, uh, that uh, conjugate representation to your one, whichever you have, doesn't give you any more information. So it's natural to consider a quotient of this space by this group. However, a such quotient may not exist in, such a naive quotient may not exist uh, in the sense of algebraic geometry. So, so we want, but it may not exist. Okay, an example. Let's take um, uh, gamma to be Z. Very simple, G to be SL to C, my favorite group. And then, then what? Then, G acts on this home. This home is very simple. Now, what are the representations of Z into a circle C? Well, you just have to tell, you just specify where one goes. And one can go to any matrix. So this home is really just as really a circle C. Well, to any invertible matrix. Sorry? Yeah, sorry, it's, it's a circle to C, sorry, Christine. And I said any invertible matrix, but of course it's a group. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Which is, you have said in 100% correct. And, uh, and so there is an orbit. So here's an orbit of that action. We have C star, but not algebra. <laughs> uh, uh, is an orbit. But it's not closed in G. Okay, so so it represents an an open, in fact, point in the quotient. Wait, wait, but what, how did you get this upper triangular matrix? It's um it's an orbit of an action. 
Yeah, it's an orbit. You know, it's an orbit of a, of an upper triangular matrix. And the, it is an orbit of an upper triangle matrix. So you said that your, your one in Z goes to an upper triangle matrix. It's a choice. Well, I'm saying that this this set is an orbit. That's a mathematically precise statement. You mean regardless of where you send one in Z? Well, or Z. <laughs> Imagine that I send one to a different matrix. Will I get the same orbit? It depends which other matrix. <laughs> if that's my question. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure what to say. Imagine that you send, okay, imagine that you send your one, yeah. one, one, zero, one, and the orbit of this element is... Yeah, fine, but what if I send it to one, zero, one, one? Then it will send it to a different orbit. Okay, that was my question. I'm just saying that this is an orbit, and it represents an open point in this naive quotient. Yes, um, and so already that well, it's open, sorry. Well, it's an um, yeah, that's that's a stupid thing to say. Um, yeah, it's not open. Not being closed. Not, not closed. That's what we need. Non closed. And so already, you know, the induced topology certainly is not as a risky topology of an algebra except. Okay. And so this problem is dealt in uh, by something which is called the dealt with by something which is called the dramatic invariant theory. And uh, and let me tell you how is it dealt with. So we have geometric invariant theory, which says, well, take a reductive loop. And the reductive group means that um, all finite dimensional representations of it must be sums of irreducible ones. And so, for example, any decent group of matrices like SLN, a GLN, O, 2N plus 1, what am I doing? O, N. O, N, symplectic groups. They're all with complex coefficients here for us. And they're all uh, reductive, non-reductive, but I should say, but not. But not, for example, C with additive structure is not reductive. So let's take a group like that. And uh, If G acts on some variety X, then the GIT geometric invariant theory quotient is denoted by double line. And it is, it's the following. You, you take the coordinate ring of uh, X, G X on it, take the invariant part, and take the spec M. So um, um, let me make some comments about this. Uh, first of all, this makes sense. This is finitely generated. This is finitely generated 
by a theorem of Nagata. And in fact, it's a subject of uh, a 14th Hilbert program. So Hilbert asked a group act on algebra, finitely trained algebra. Does the invariant part of the action, which is always an algebra, is it finitely generated? And at the time, for a long time, there were no uh, counterexamples, but Nagata proved uh, that um, indeed it is finitely generated for a reductive group, and he found examples of actions, non reductive groups, for which this is not the case. Do you assume anything about? the nature of such an action? It must be algebraic. So nothing else. So it can be trivial in particular, but then of course the answer is yes. yes. Yeah. That's the easiest part of Hilbert's problem, yes. Um, so let's, let's uh, now let's think, let me sort of unpack this. What does it say? Well, it says, in other words, this is equivalent to saying that the coordinate ring of this double quotient should be the invariant part of this coordinate ring. So I hope that intuitively it makes sense because uh, it says that what should be the regular functions on the quotient of x by g? Well, this should be regular functions on x which are constant on orbits. Is it true for any algebra? I take spec M of an algebra. Yes. And then I take C of a spec M of A. Is it again A? Uh, yes, by definition. <laughs> no, no, it's not by definition. Sorry, it's not by definition, but it is everything is set up in that way that you you get it. You get it. It's like the most desired thing about this whole set. Like Gelf and Neymar on algebra. That's right. So this, this quotient is called the um, SL, well, it's called G character variety. This is called character variety. Oh, gamma. Oh, no. Well, I jumped the gun. <laughs> I jumped the gun. Doesn't make sense. Uh, there's no gamma here. So, okay, so we have this geometric invariant theory quotient. I should say this is basically a coarser quotient than, than, um, than the set theory quotient. What does it mean? It means that there is really a homomorphism. Well, there's really a, a function on points. This set, there's a, so there's a further quotient. In fact, it's, you can say this is the, it's the, the, the least of a quotient of this set to make it into an algebraic variety. That's the intuitive uh, way to think about it. But it's a subjection, right? It's a subjection, yes, because it's a quotient. What happens if this original nice quotient turns out to be nice in the sense of topology? Good question, yes. Then, in fact, this would be a, a nice identity. Uh -huh. Which would be the case, for example, when G is finite. Okay, so I, I jumped the gun, but uh, I think... And what if X is finite? Sorry? If X is finite. Well, if X is finite, mm -hmm. then it has a finite isomorphism group. So the action of G on it factors for a finite group action. And then we are back to Adam's question. Oh, OK. Yeah, thank you. Very good answer. Thank you so much. Yes. So now um, I jumped the gun a little bit, but you can now I guess, I think, guess what I meant to say is that now I can define the 
ده اسمه شانس And we have the space of, of representations from gamma to G. G acts on it, and we can take the GIT quotient, and this is called the G character variety. <laughs> of gamma. All right, so I would like to try to now understand that. And, um, you know, uh, again, um, you know, and to understand, to understand it really, we need to understand the coordinating of that. And, um, and for that, so let's assume that G is a matrix group. meaning a group of matrices in, in GLM. Then what? Then for any... But over complex numbers? Yes, everything will be over complex numbers. Then for any gamma in, in, the, the gamma in the group, we have a function which sends... Which sends we have a function... Uh, which tends rho to the rho of gamma, which is a matrix. So then we can take a trace, and it's a complex number. Okay, so, and so this, this is a function on, I, I claim it's a regular function on home. And it's preserved by the action of G, because conjugation we preserve the trace. And then, as you remember the definition, what is the regular function on it? Well, on, on this character variety, well, it's a regular function of home preserved by G. Okay, so this gives us a function which I would not buy tau on the character variety. This is called trace function. which depends on, on the gamma, on the state of gamma, of course. So the work of Prochessi can be used to prove the following theorem. Um, ah, because the function here is a representation. So gamma is fixed. When you run representations raw, then you take a trace, right? Yeah. So you evaluate it, gamma, and then you trace it. Right. So uh, there's this theorem, uh, which uh, appeared in many papers of different people, including my papers, that um, trace functions generate um, the coordinate rings or GLM. I'm just going to write like this. Maybe I'm going to be skipping now a C just for brevity. SLM, a symplectic group, orthogonal group, two and plus one. So, what are these? These are, well, this one is not simple, but these are simple uh, algebraic groups of type A. Type B, type C, but uh, so you notice that type D is missing. In fact, it's not true that they generate uh, a Character varieties for type B, which is SO2M. Hmm. Um, in fact, I can tell you on the subject. And um, you can in fact, you, in fact, you can consider generalized trace function. So for G let's G B SO2M. Uh, 
um, the generalized first functions, general generalized base functions what are those well you start with rho then you take rho of gamma this is in g Then you take any representation V of SO to N, and then you end up with GL V, and then you take trace. V is finite dimensional. Yes, V is finite dimensional. So you see, when I said matrix group, it automatically gives you a trace on G because you have this canonical representation of G on some CM. But here, I want to consider all possible representations of G. You know, you have the obvious one of SO to the to, to N dimensional, but I want to consider throw them all in. They still don't generalize, don't, uh, don't generate. Uh, the SO to N character variety. Well, for, for let's say generic gamma or for gamma large enough, for free, for example, for free gamma of rank more than one. All right, but this is just maybe a comment on the side. I, I want to go down down to earth and talk, go talk about um, SL2 character varieties. Actually, before that, I'm going to make some general comments. I'm a bit confused because it seems to me that the statement about generating something depends on what gamma you take. If I take gamma to be the neutral element, probably you'd never generate. Oh, I think that's yeah. taken. And the gamma. All gamma. Yeah. Yeah. And here, the family this way. gamma runs through all the space functions that generate. How should I understand it? Uh, this theorem, the Fourier theorem, yes. Sassy theorem. So when you say trace functions generate, you run all gammas. Correct. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Oh. Mm. So now for manifold. For connected, manifold M, you know, we will use this notation, uh, so this will be the character variety of M. You know, if if it's not connected, then of course uh, would you would have to that would depend on the base point and uh, and uh, maybe it wouldn't make sense to to use this definition. And so this is called you know, character variety of M. It's very important in geometry. So it takes care only on this fundamental group, yes, of of M. Yes, that's my definition, and um, it doesn't depend on the base point mm -hmm. because we consider mm -hmm. presentations up to conjugation so uh, the base point will not play at all and so this object is very important in geometry for example hyperbolic ah, this is still bad factors structures on a three-dimensional manifold M are classified well there's something called for a given hyperbolic structure 
uh, for any geometric structure, really, there is something called monodromic monodrom representation. And so it defines a presentation of M. And um, so classified by representations of pi 1 M into the isometry group. I, I do everything oriented. So uh, ISOM plus of three dimensional hyperbolic space, which happens to be PS. L to C. So, um, which is this type of presentation is very close to S and to C. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's how a, a character of varieties appear in geometry. Other structures, like projective structures on manifolds and so on, are also classified uh, by. Uh, points of character varieties. And, you know, if we allow, if we allow group PSL to R, so with real coefficients, then um, the Teichmuller space of closed surface sigma, what's that for space? It's a space which uh, classifies uh, classifies um, hyperbolic or if you like complex structures on sigma, okay? This uh, is really uh, in bijection with a connected component mm -hmm. of, well, uh, now I just maybe want to talk about the set gamma, so fundamental group of sigma. G S. Well, let's just do G here. The, in this connected component, there's no issues with those uh, and here it's points and. Uh, and no need for GIT. Excuse me, you made this remark. If we allow G to be PSL of two of R, uh, because uh, we primarily work with C. Correct. Yes. Over C, and this is over R. That's right. And to be to be very precise, I need to add some certain certain word, which is word which is marked, but uh, just just so. So that it is precisely true as stated. And then, you know, there is something called uh, Riemann Hilbert correspondence. Uh, Hilbert correspondence. And you don't mean emails exchanged between these two guys. <laughs> yeah, probably it was a paper mail. Yes. <laughs> uh, um, which uh, defines a bijection. So this can be done now for energy between product of variety of sigma and certain. Um, uh, sections uh, or holomorphic connections uh, 
on uh, holomorphic bundles, holomorphic. Uh, on over sigma. When I say holomorphic, they also are flat. Okay, and because they are flat, they define the representation of the fundamental group of sigma into G. And uh, yes, and the, the, this is one side of the correspondence, and then can go the other way. And uh, this is also something studied for uh, very intensely in, in complex geometry. And, uh, and also, it's important for physics. So in physics, connections on bundles, flat connections corresponds to them. Well, connections in bundles are corresponds to them physical fields, a subject of quantum field theories. And uh, and when they are flat, they correspond to sort of classical fields um, understand, understood in classical physics. And then quantum field theory quantize those. Um, and you consider ones which are not flat. Excuse me, I have several questions. First of all, a disconnected component is of this knife quotient or this geometric? Uh, of this set theory quotient, because then you don't have there's this one component which consists of um, uh, discrete paper representations. In this component, you don't have to worry about the, the anomalies we discussed, so you can just take quotient. Mm -hmm. So, in this example, it goes slightly beyond uh, you know what we discussed, in particular because we are dealing with real numbers, but um. But morally speaking, I mean, these are also character varieties. Okay, and second question. Uh, this Teichmuller space is defined as space which classifies uh, yes. these hyperbolic complex structures. Yes, this That's is right. definition, and, and there is this correspondence. Yeah. And the third thing which I want to ask, uh, I don't have uh, enough intuition about these isometric groups of uh, these hyperbolic spaces. Is it expected uh, to... Uh, to obtain something which is a complex algebraic group or no. Um, no, it's not, but so it happens to be. Like for, for SL2, for two dimensional hyperbolic space, these are the, the this is isom plus H2. Oh, so it's a bit of an accident, I guess. Okay. But at least one can say that it is always finite dim dimensional, yes? Oh, yes. But complex structure. It's, a group. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. it's always a new group. Okay, thank you. Okay. And sorry, I kind of lost connection. How did we get here from not? <laughs> Very good. So let's go back to that. Not obvious. <laughs> it's not obvious. <laughs> Let's link it together. I link it. <laughs> Everything is linked and intertwined. So, um, <laughs> that was a wrong square. Yes, how did we get here? Well, um, we studied scale models. which uh, involved a three-dimensional manifold and a ring with specified element A. And then we had this theorem. Invertible element A, right? Yes. Invertible. What was this theorem? Which said that, well, we decided that they're complicated. And then we consider this very simple example Uh -huh. so this, and then the theorem said that this is really the coordinate ring. It really depends on the fundamental group of M, number one. And number two is the, is the, this is the SL2 character variety of M. 
or of the fundamental group of M. So this theorem, uh, in particular, if some very simple geometric definition, I would say, of, uh, of this ring, which I'm going to explore and show an example in a moment. But um, I should say now- Wait, that... sorry, sorry, this notation confuses me. So you say that these are modules and now we're writing that is equal to a ring. That's right. So if you remember for pl plus minus one- Ah, then it was enough. For... Okay. The... Change crossings. And yes. Crossings. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Just... Yeah. Right, yes. And then, in fact, in fact, uh, furthermore, Sorry, as far as I remember, you also mentioned that this uh, always forms an algebra by the operation of uh, somehow concatenation of this. Concatenation was business for temporary algebra when there are endpoints on the bottom and top. Ah. And then we talked also about thickening surface when you can stack one on top of the other. Not arbitrary M. Okay. okay, so for arbitrary M, there is no way to make this kind of module an algebra, but that's correct. Right. Uh, uh, examples, uh, very particular. One is uh, the, this choice of A to be plus or minus one. The second is the special choice of N to be a thickened surface. That's right. That's the important point because like I can take a surface crosses one, uh -huh. and, you know, I can take two links up to isotopy and how do I define a new link up to isotopy form of those two? You can say, well, I took, pick, put one on top of the other, but since there is S1 structure, I can go from the bottom one to the top and I get something else. So furthermore, uh, for, for A equal minus one, it's a funny thing that A, the minus one is easier to understand than plus one. This isomorphism will send uh, K and not K to the trace function gamma, phi gamma, actually with minus, and gamma is the, the um, uh, well, element of the fundamental group represented By K. Well, you can say, you can say what's going on. Number one, uh, K is free loop. Yes, it doesn't, it doesn't go for the base point. So it only defines conjugacy class in Pi 1. But it doesn't matter because uh, tau, uh, this gamma in this tau is preserved by conjugation. Okay. And then you can say, well, there's another problem because K is unoriented. So, you know, it's really, you, even if, if it's not even true that it's just conjugacy class because it could be up to inverse. But tau gamma inverse is really the same as tau gamma. Maybe I should say it. And it's the same as tau alpha gamma alpha inverse. And uh, uh, for any alpha, because, well, yeah, because what? It's because the same is true for, because trace of A inverse is actually trace of A for, uh, uh, is the same as trace E, A, E inverse. For SL2C matrices, or SL2C matrices, trace of A and A inverse is the same. So this makes sense. But it is weird. It is weird that, uh, that I make this claim for minus, but not for plus. But if you remember, we, this, we did this one fundamental calculation of this king. And if you remember, it was minus a to the third of no king. And so, you know, uh, 
that's a complication because it means that uh, uh, it, well, okay, for, for minus one, for my a equal minus one, it really means that this side is invariant under those kings. It's, kings don't matter on this side, and therefore we can just talk about loops up to homotopy. But for a equal one, we cannot just talk about loops up to homotopy because uh, this loop is minus this one. Okay, so this is this is a sort of weird aspect of this theory. However, this this is true for any for a equal one as well. For that, we have to use spin structures to somehow normalize it. And with spin structure correction, this is equal to that. Anyways, the, the, this, I guess, minus one is good enough for us. And also, there was this correspondence between Kaufman bracket and this Jones polynomial. It was also using minus a, as far as I remember, yes? That is true. Minus one. Minus, minus, minus so q, then q was to, yes. Yeah. Was, well, q was to a to power minus four. So, so minus a, minus a. I, I believe plus. It also frankly depends how you define John's polynomial. I mean, <laughs> so, let me say something about the proof of this. And uh, first of all, it starts with the Cayley Hamilton identity. Okay, who remembers Cayley Hamilton theorem? It says that uh, matrix satisfies its own characteristic polynomial. And for SL2, it means that A square because basically, can you say again why is tau gamma inverse the same as tau gamma? Yes. Ah, because of a trace. Of trace a inverse the same as trace a. So Katie Hamilton says a square minus trace a times a plus one is zero. Okay, because mm. well, that's that's the that, that what it says that a satisfies its characteristic polynomial because the determinant of a is one. Okay, and then there's this work of Prochessy. which roughly can be characterized this way, that uh, it's, he, he his work roughly boils down to the fact that all algebraic relations between trace functions. Are consequences of multilinearization of the Cayley Hamilton identity. Okay, so <laughs> let me explain this in, in on concrete example what it means. Multi, let's multiply this by B and let's multiply it by A inverse. So, first of all, by A inverse, maybe. I get this. Now I multiply it by B. And now I take traces of that. So I'm going to add trace here. I'm going to add the word trace here. And I'm going to add trace here. It's messy, but maybe you can see what it implies. Well, anyways, it's a simple mathematics. It implies that uh, trace A, trace B is equal trace AB plus trace AB inverse. Yeah, maybe if you if you find my explanation of it is too fancy, you can just write two by two matrices A and B, and you can check it out. This is for us to see, of course. Sorry, B two minus one or A to minus one times B, or does does it even matter? 
goes a, a, a inverse b on the left hand side and yeah. on the right hand side you have a it's a inverse not b inverse oh oh, oh i see Plus. okay good 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 point good point so you could write here a inverse b hmm? but frankly i can also and i should do it but you're right it also doesn't matter <laughs> mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter because i can also do trace uh, I can do all sorts of things. I, I can um, invert that. And then I can replace all of that is the same. So now, so what it means is that, you know, the next step to that from there is that it means the tau of a uh, um, well, I used gamma. Maybe I would say tau of uh, alpha beta is equal. No. Tau alpha tau beta. Is equal. Tau alpha beta plus tau alpha beta inverse. Mm -hmm. All right, and then now we try. So now I need to change the board, but I, I will, let's remember this identity. I'm going to rewrite it, I guess. Tau alpha, tau beta. So now I claim that this is related to this identity for A. Remember A is minus one, that's the simplest value. And what relation do we have? Well, we have this relation equals minus this, minus this. Now let's consider, well, what it means is of course that it's a part of a diagram, bigger diagram. And there is some, those ends connect. I don't know how, but this is one possibility. They connect this way. One, one possible connection. Now let it, this be, let's say, let's orient it. Let this be a base point. Let this be G, let this be H. This is base points for my fundamental group. So then this will be G, this will be H, and this will be G H inverse, or if you like, it could be also, you know, any of those. It could be, uh, if you like, you can go the other way around. It could be H G inverse, whichever you like. But now, This is the same identity as this one. Uh, maybe I shouldn't call it uh, G and H. Maybe I should call it really A and B. I'll find beta. Alpha, beta, alpha, beta, alpha, beta inverse. So this means now, T alpha beta equals minus T alpha T beta. Actually, this should be minus, if you remember. And this would be, yes, minus T alpha beta inverse. And then we get exactly this identity between a sort of seeing, well, between the trace functions. This is just for one type of connection, but uh, other connections will also uh, uh, identify the skin relation with this trace identity. So that's the outline, that's the outline of the proof uh, of, of this theorem.
so, so in a moment, I'm going to give you examples of that, uh, of the applications of, of this theorem and uh, examples showing that it's useful. But first, uh, well, I want to do those examples in the context of scaling algebra. So let's go to scaling algebras. Okay, so as we discussed already, they are any surface. Sigma, we defined S of sigma for simplicity to be just S of uh, sigma cross I. And this is an algebra. Yes, with uh, with the product of two links being L1 on top of L2. Stating it already, again, what we mentioned already earlier. This is a scan algebra. And uh, basis for those scan algebras is, is easy, and it's a totalization of theorem of Kaufman. And uh, now when you keep writing the ring and an element, what is the default option? And the and ring and, and the element. So I could include here if I wanted, uh, but I do it when when the statement doesn't matter, so when the statement doesn't depend okay. on R and A. I just wondering about the convention. Yeah. So I, I mentioned earlier that if others are known from the context or don't matter, then I, I skip those. So what happens if R is C and uh, A is plus minus one? How these two algebra structures relate? They're the same. They're the same. Yes. It's obvious. Because plus minus one structure, you, you can change crossings. And I said, just take any disjoint union. Uh -huh. Here, I say, if you have surface cross i, then I can say, well, uh, L1 times L2 means L1 on top of L2. But if you can change crossings, then it doesn't matter. Uh, okay. I mean, if you can, I mean, they, are, they don't need any theorems to, to say that. Is it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So certainly it is true for thickened surfaces, but how about uh, some more general manifolds for which you can also define algebra structure in such a way? Is it possible? Yeah, but uh, no. <laughs> That's the short answer is no. I don't know any. Okay, I, I'm pretty pretty much convinced that you cannot do this in general for general manifold, but still maybe there is some something which is more general that, than thickened surfaces, but some special. You know, I I thought about that uh, myself, and I. I came to conclusion that there is no such thing. Uh, yeah. I don't see it. Okay. Um, yeah. Simple as that. Um, mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, of course, you know, technically speaking, you can remove a point <laughs> out of this space. And because removing point doesn't change anything, you just move your links around it. So it's like mm -hmm. there's no effect on the scale, scale model. But yeah, otherwise, well, okay. So what you need is you need this I structure, I bundle structure. Yes. Okay, so. But it's a trivial bundle. What if it would be locally trivial? Imagine that you sort of, it's like replacing a, a surface. Um... Yeah, yeah, so that's what I wanted to say. What I mean, okay. And... I was wanted to say that what if sigma is non-orientable, mm -hmm. and then you take a covering, a, a covered one, well, a, a bundle, non-trivial bundle, which will make it orientable, 
And then indeed you can talk about algebra structure. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, I mean, like, like this, the side of a cylinder versus the Mobius strip. Yes. One is just circle cross I, and one is not a circle cross I. So, so, so then I guess you wouldn't be able to do it because when I look at the Mobius strip, you cannot put things one on, on the top of the other. That's right. So, yeah. So, in fact, in fact you're right. Exactly. I answered my own question. Okay. So, that's tricky. You're right. I, I don't concur with you. So even a very simple try to generalize phase. That's right. Yes. Yeah. This is the only obvious reason yeah. in which you can turn it into algebra. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So, this, those as models, as models, these are actually simple. Because there's generalization of this approach which we did um, of Kaufman. And there's a basis. I think first was uh, found by Shetitsky, uh, which said that this algebra or model has basis of multi loops. Sigma without, so maybe I should just assume that by definition, multi loop with cannot have contractible component. What's a, what's a multi loop? Well, basically, it's a bunch of loops which don't intersect. And also, I don't allow trivial loops, compatible loops. Now, the fact that it's a spanning set is very simple because uh, take any, what is to this, the scale model by definition is built of links, by link diagrams. You can resolve all the crossings in a link diagram. You get a bunch of loops. So every element here certainly is a linear combination of those multi loops. You have this scale generation, yes, which allows to eliminate contractible loops. They become this. This uh, const uh, scalar data. Wait, so what if your surface is at the two sphere, then all loops are contracted? Correct. So, and it's a zero algebra. So, we allow, uh, so, uh, okay, so empty set is a multi loop. Very good okay. point. Oh, so, it was one dimensional, including empty set. The same way we I mentioned to you guys that empty set is a link of zero components, it's also a multi loop of zero loops. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you get a cyclic model on one on one element. So you just get R. It's also the spectrum of a zero C structure. Very good. Yes. <laughs> yes, another connection, <laughs> maybe. Um, so the harder part, the harder part is to prove that there's no relations, there's no linear combination relations between those multi loops. But we we all kind of discussed it already in the context of. Um, uh, say the temporary leap algebra. Uh, it's not a difficult thing to prove that there's no relations. Um, but it's kind of funny. Uh, only when your sky module becomes an algebra, you talk about the basis. One would like to see any statement about the basis or non existence of a basis for sky modules, but are not algebra. That's right. So I said, first of all, I gave an example of a of a complement of a two comma n torus knot, if you remember, there was a basis. Uh -huh. And I made another statement that in general, uh, they are very difficult to compute. Uh -huh. But difficult to compute, but do we have at least a statement of uh, whether these kind modules are free or not? No. We know that many of them are not free. Excellent. And there is no known algorithm to determine whether it is free or not. Okay. In fact, I'm going to just tell you more a little bit about that. Excuse me, in this theorem of Przetiecki, there are in particular hidden two, two uh, statements that this module is a free module. This is one. And OK, yeah. one hidden statement. But the other thing which I wanted to ask is that this basis is in the sense of free module, yes? Correct. Well, you know, the moment you say a module has a basis, it implies the module is free. Because free module is one which has a basis. So let's do an example because I think we are short on examples. 
So, you had already asked me about S2, which is really the same as D2, and has basis consisting of empty set. Analus is slightly more interesting. Yes, so this is an annulus as basis, which I would denote Xn. And what's that? Annulus. And Xn will be just N loops. Mm. Uh, yeah, so this is each of them is X. And in fact, uh, okay, well, so the, the, basically the, the reason for that is the only Martin loops in annulus are like that. Uh, that's some basic topological fact. But remember, this is an algebra, so this is really n power of X. So what is that? Well, this is really R. This is this this is I'm doing here a generic R. So this is really, or, or general R, any R. This is really just a ring of polynomials over X. So efficiently enough, that's an algebra. It's algebra over what field? Over R. R algebra. You can do R algebras. R is, so is R. R is any ring with a specified invertible element. Commutative. Commutative. Commutative, yes. Okay. Now, let's do something more fun. And so let's talk about uh, an example of a character variety, which is interesting um, and connect, connected to scaling algebras. So let's take sigma to be a disk with two punctures. Well, I just couldn't draw it. Okay, so the fundamental group of it is three on two generators. And let's say A, B. I realize you have not yet another shortcut. When you write the surface, you mean that it's S of the surface cross I. That's right. That's what I that's what I meant. Actually, did it. I I made this comment here. And yes. Especially useful in, when you're working on this whiteboard and every every stroke of pen takes time. Yeah, so actually this is an interesting in its own. It's a free group on two generators. And I think it's interesting on its own to, to study SL2 character variety of it. You can ask, I can quiz you guys. What is so G is SL2? I can quiz you guys what is SL2 character variety of a free group on two generators. Well, um, you know, it comes really from this dual object. I can first, first answer and give you the classical answer to it. The classical answer to it is when well, we look at this ring of polynomials, the dual object. Remember, it's generated by trace functions. And Frick and Klein, I think in the 19th century, already observed that this is really the polynomial ring in, two in three variables. Tau A, trace function A, trace function B, and trace function AB. Wait, so character varieties were studied in 19th century? Yes, but in a very different language. So this is... German. Sorry? German. <laughs> yes. And uh, also mathematical. Mathematically, very different language. What does it mean? It means that every... So morally speaking, 
uh, every every representation. Oh, free group into SL2C. Oh, my God. Wrong. Uh, on, free, on generators A and B is determined up to conjugation. Every such representation up to conjugation. is determined by rate of rho at A, which is, you know, tau A of rho, trace of rho at B, But that's not enough. You, you mean one maybe intuitively would like to say, oh, this is enough. You know, you just know place of row of A and shows of row of B. But these are not enough because you don't know how row of A is related to row of B. So it turns out that it's enough to specify trace of row of A B. Okay, let me explain this. Maybe that's not clear. So what does what does this mean? I.e. Really, the character variety here, you know, what's the dual object in algebraic geometry to this coordinate ring on three variables? Well, it is just C3 with coordinates. Wait, so there are no relations whatsoever between these tiles? Correct. Huh? So give me give me three complex numbers and morally speaking, there is precisely one representation of free group on two generators into a sort of C with these three numbers being these traces. It's in your formula chi G, this G is SL2C. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Ah, okay. I'm a little bit confused by this result. For me, it is somehow unexpected, but I cannot spot where this so where this surprise lies. In fact, well, what is the main su surprising thing that this is something which is generated by three elements, or that there is no additional relation? How, how to view this result? Somehow, I cannot. It is uh, unexpected. <laughs> Yeah, the three numbers, all of that, the fact that we just need those three numbers. You know, it, give me two representations. I'm going to compute those three numbers. They're the same, then they're conjugate. And that's, and that's non-trivial. And also, as Piotr already observed, there can be anything. There is one for which this is zero, zero, and zero. Mm. Okay, what can be done? Rho of A times B is the same as Rho of A times Rho of B. Yes, Rho is a rep no, no. Uh, representation, yes? No, no, wait. Uh... No, I'm not claiming that tau A, a B is oh, okay. uh, yes. Rho, but yeah. Rho. Of course. Okay? And then we apply trace. So we have trace of Rho of A times Rho of B. This can be also expressed as trace of Rho of B times Rho of A, but nothing more. It's not like a product of traces. And this is enough to recover representation. In fact, I'm going to, yeah, so it's very mysterious, very good. And I'm going to make it now very intuitive for you guys. Because what are, what are we studying here? We are studying this ring. This ring is really the scalar algebra for A equal minus one or A equal one. So we are really studying links in, in twice puncture disk. What's the basis of it? Well, multi loops. What are the multi loops in this ring, in this algebra? Mental group. Well, multi loops are loops which have no self intersections. How many of them are there? Well, you have this one. Let's just start a single loop for a, for a moment. Have this one. 
and you have yellow one. Ah, uh -huh, yes. Yes. What are multi loops? Well, these are these with some multiplicities. Yes. So, what is the scane algebra? The scane algebra is just the coordinate ring in, well, what I would call A, B, A, B. A, B. Yep. This is A. It is like the fundamental group presentation. And this is A, B. Right, because A, B, uh, A, B and the, the yellow loop are like generators of a fundamental group, no? Well, and A and B are, and this is, well, it should be really tau A. You know, maybe I should tau here. So, of course, the mem this A, B is not the product of A and B. Yeah. So, it's clear, if this is a basis, it's clear that we have we have this statement. So, this is exactly a Klein. So we reproved, uh, Frick, well, this example reproves Flicker Klein in a very intuitive way. Now, part of your surprise, I think, came from this. Suppose I know trace of A and B and trace of AB. What if I have, what, what is, I need to know, it this should determine representation. So I should know what is trace of rho A to the seventh B square A B to minus fifth. Yes, very, very complicated. And algebraically, it will be very difficult to reduce it to, to those three numbers. But if you give me a complicated word in A and B, I'm going to draw it here. I'm going to use scan relations to break all the crossings, and I will have polynomial in loops. Okay. That's a geometric way. To, so, so this, uh, yeah, in particular, I just gave you a geometric way to show that uh, um, these three numbers determine Trace of row of any of any word. So in general, it seems that it would be possible to generalize this uh, for uh, arbitrary number of punctured points. No. Oh. Uh, let's do it in a moment. But also, I used here the word morally as a okay as a legal disclaimer that this is not true. <laughs> Because you know, of course, of course, it cannot be true. Because uh, you know, if I send A to this matrix or to this matrix, well, they have the same trace, and there's no way they can be determined. This that they be distinguished. Yes. So we have to consider that up to we have to consider this coarser quotient, the smaller quotient. The GIT quotient. So when I say up to conjugation, well, it's uh, it's uh, in quotation marks. And we don't really have much time to, to go into those details, but roughly speaking, it means, for example, that it is what I said is true for irreducible representations. But basically, if you if we are if if we allow, if we ignore representations which uh, which are upper upper uh, triangular. Then, then we'll be fine. But what is strictly true, not just morally, is this Fricke Klein. Well, so, you know, I, I attribute this to Fricke Klein. To be honest, I don't remember how did this, I don't remember why, sort of in the literature, you can see this could be contributed to Fricke Klein. And frankly, I never. I don't remember actually looking at what exactly Flick and Klein proved. So yeah, but I'm I'm not asking about you know historical issues who proved what, but uh, this equality that you wrote is strict. It's not just morally. It's that's right. It's, it's, this equality is strict. Okay. Yes. And because uh, we have here this x, which is GIT quotient, this is good. When we talk about conjugation, it's really slightly more general thing. Okay, so now let me ask the following question. I'm looking here at this place, all right? And so I can look at the book. And, and now what if we change uh, G, which is SLN, all right? SL2. SL2, sorry. I want to change it into SLN and F2 into FN. So what if I give you two natural numbers, M and N? What can you tell me then in the spirit of Fricke Klein? There will be way more generators. Mm -hmm. But any results are known? Um, yeah. So um, 
well, how much time we have. Well, actually, in fact, it is not that much known. Um, I can tell you the generators. Um, well, let's do it on the next board. Okay. Oh. The RM. Hey. I hope I got it right. Um, I didn't get it right. Um, this doesn't make sense, of course. Um, I'm embarrassed because actually it's one of the it's one of the state statements theorems in my paper, but I don't remember. And I want to spend too much time looking at this. Um, um, just rough idea for me. So, for n equal two. It's enough to look for, it's generated by trace functions with words of length at most three. So tau A, tau AI, tau AIJ, or tau IJK. Well, so we have to consider tau AI. But, but you, you cannot write just one natural number, you have to write two. So n equal two and m equal two. These are two independent natural numbers. Or do you assume that you have uh, n equal to m? No, m is the number of generators, and you have words in a1 up to a m. M, exactly. So so why why is it just, uh, so if, if n is equal to two and m is equal to million, still just three generators I know? Yes. No, no, not feature. All words are length of generators, but now this is the length of this word. Ah, okay. So M is in the length. Okay. Okay. So you Actually, you know what? I... Of length three, for example, but million of letters and this yeah. okay. million Thank of you. Words. And actually, I am embarrassed again because, well, first of all, it's a. Uh, uh, well, first of all, it is in my paper where I consider this statement and similar ones for other groups. Although this is sort of known also in, in, in folk literature, it's in other people's work as well. And in fact, um, for, uh, for n equal to is another, enough to consider uh, these generators. And in fact, furthermore, uh, it's unknown what's the optimal length. It's an open question. What's the optimal length for large n? Okay. And I, sh I should now, this may be a good time to respond to what, to, to Adam's question. You know, um, we talked about Y's puncture disk, but if I take three puncture disk, then things become way more complicated because um, you can have very complicated, even simple loop can be very complicated. Yes, because I could. Do something like that. 
Oh yeah. Mm. All right, and first of, and also remember uh, for for um, two punctures. Well, for all those examples from previous board, we had actually commutative scale algebra because the, those different simple loops they, they did not bother each other. They were all you can always make them disjoint, and certainly this wouldn't be true here. There's no way to make those two disjoint. The scale algebra of this thing is non-commutative. Well, the, but even, even if you consider A equal one or minus one, when it is commutative, it's not a polynomial, it's not a polynomial ring. Because the the, the non-trivial relation between those generators, between loops. Very interesting. Oh. Um. So this is unrelated now to any character variety, yes? No, no, it's related. So it will come the form for a not equal plus minus one. But also, so it could be seen as some sort of deformation, yes? Not a polynomial ring. Mm. Polynomial algebra, not a polynomial algebra. Or A equal plus minus one. Okay. I don't claim I have a proof here on, on this board, but I think I have a convincing argument that you don't have, you know, you cannot, you, you cannot, there's, there's infinitely many different types of simple loops. So certainly what we did before wouldn't work to identify the polynomial algebra. And, and furthermore, those loops now necessarily intersect uh, in some non-trivial way. So, if if that's okay, I am. Yeah, we are happy, I suppose. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But it um, seemed like we were looking at uh, some. Yes, yes, yes. I was a little bit. Uh, yes, I was a little bit confused. So, what is uh, true in general that if you take a to be plus or minus one, you get uh, uh, this uh, connection with this character variety, but you are not getting polynomial algebra. Okay. Correct. Okay. It is of the form C of this character variety, but it turns out to be not a polynomial algebra Correct. anymore. Okay. So this Froke Pika line is very special for well, it's true for Z and free, free group on two generators. You have very nice uh, hmm. uh, algebra structure or variety structure, but not in general. All right. So now I want to tell you, I want to give you another nice example. And I think, again, I will start with character varieties. I want to understand them. Now, for a free group uh, generated by free abelian group, E1 up to EN. Um, and so we want to study now, we want to study now representations of Zn into, into G. Um, well, let's keep it things simple. So as SLN. And this is really what? Uh, well, this is really uh, up to conjugation, yes? And this is really what? This is really studying uh, N. Oh, I should maybe consider this here. Uh, like that. Like that. 
This is really n commuting matrices. And up to conjugation. And um, well, uh, as uh, as uh, I guess uh, is well known, uh, you have your uncommuting matrices. They, as every uh, B student will tell you after taking uh, algebra course, uncommuting matrices can be all uh, diagonalized uh, simultaneously, and uh, and so. So what does it mean? It means that really the character variety of Zn is, well, what happens if you match, if you diagonalize them simultaneously? Well, they're all in the maximum torus, how many of them? N. So they are there, but even the matrices in the maximum torus can be conjugated. Uh, Yes, and um, because what? Well, because the action of by conjugation on, on the SLN, SLN on SLN, restricts to action of the by group on the maximum torus. And the by group is the symmetric group on N letters. So I'm saying that uh, you have to consider now diagonal action of the symmetric group on the diagonal matrices. Now, I, I sort of made a little joke here because I said that this is like should be obvious to every B student, uh, B grade student in algebra, because of course not all matrices are uh, diagonalizable. So let's say this is not true if you consider commuting matrices up to conjugation. But again, the non diagonalism matrices are can be ignored because of us taking this GIT quotient. So this is this is literally true. But that uh, it requires an A student to understand. That's right. And you know, sometimes when you make mistake twice, you get correct statements. <laughs> it's all about making mistakes even number of times. <laughs> and uh, and may seem obvious, but by the way, if you change this G from SLN to other algebraic group, this will not be true. This will make sense for the algebraic groups. That, uh, there's always maximum torus and there's a by group, but it's not true. Understanding of commuting matrices in Lie groups is a very difficult business. And it's not true that even that, you know, that free commuting matrices, say in orthogonal group, can be conjugate to diagonal ones. Even if they're generic. Sorry, the action is of S capital N, yes? Yes. Same. No, no, it's it's the vial group of SLN. Ah, okay. Oh, what's that? Yeah, but at a certain moment, you wrote capital N and equals lowercase n because you use it interchangeably. Oh, no, but... No, no, uh, okay, that, that, that's a mistake, yeah. That's a, a remnant of my earlier mistake. So Z to the power capital N, but SL. Aha, and these two Ns are unrelated. They're unrelated. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, no, you, it's, uh, yeah. So let's, let's bring it, let's make it very simple. So in particular. So, so can you show to me how this permutation group is acting on an N torus? Uh, it's acting by permutation. So the torus, you now what's what's T? Well, it's uh, these are diagonal matrices in SLM. Um, so you can think of them as okay, so T is just ah because it's not that it's not a circle. It's really a torus in SLM. Okay, okay. Okay, the power of maximal torus is not the, the n dimensional torus, is the power of. Okay. Because that's confusing, you see. Yeah, yeah. You see, Tn, you think, is a torus which is n dimensional. Yeah, yes, you're right. Oh, also yeah. maximal torus. Oh. So you see, that's. Uh, you said it, but you know. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, Salam. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Now it's so in particular, let's just bring it home. Let's make it as simple as possible. Um, what's the SL2 character variety of Z? Well, it's a what's the maximum torus in, in, in Z2 for in SL2? No, for SL2, the maximum torus. Sorry. Yes, I do remember that this is a we are in algebraic category. So it's really just a C star. Mm-hmm. It's pairs X1, well, X1 inverse. Yes, yeah, so it's really C star. And so we have here twice C star. Um, quotiented by the action of the Weyl group, or S2. And this action is very simple. Well, so let's now, let's let's write it now duality in the coordinate ring. Sorry, I'm a little bit confused. Shouldn't maximal torus be compact, or we are working in something algebraic that's... Still so to see, no, maximal torus is not compact. Yeah. You mean, you know, SUM, of course, in compact groups, uh, maximal torus is compact. Yeah. So this is algebraic torus. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, so the coordinate ring of this will be, well, uh, simply, uh, simply, well, it will be the coordinate ring of C star cross C star, Modulo, well, in the invariant part under S2. What's so let's use some variables. So a variable could be L, which is M. the coordinate ring of C star is Laurent polynomials. Sorry. People could see my back there. And what is this S2 action? It's very simple. It sends M L to L inverse and sends M to M inverse. So that's the description of character variety of Z2. So now, sure don't fall asleep because now will be interesting stuff. Now, um, I want to tell you a version of it for, for, for scan algebras. And as you can expect, scan algebra will quantize it. And so let's do it. Uh, so this is a theorem by uh, Fromm and Galka. Uh, S of torus. So, well, okay, I'll just write torus is going to be are now things will be we have the same variables but they will not be commuting they will be q commuting and then you know we will have here also a store and the relation between ml is that it is going to be it's going to be a times L M D. All right, so, you know, it's in bracket business. Uh, we use variable A, but if you like, uh, maybe more familiar variable is Q. And uh, how does this S2 act, act? Well, it acts. A is this uh, chosen generator, yes, on the left-hand side. Yes. Well, uh, sorry, A, A, A comes from the ring R, yes? This is always this... Uh, Specified invertible element. Mm-hmm. If that's what you ask. So, but uh, on the left hand side, you have S of torus, yes. comma R, comma A. Correct, yes. Yes, yes. As usual, yes. So, what do we see here? Well, uh, you know, what's that? That is. Where is A on the right hand side? 
Well, it's this A. Yeah, but where is it on the right hand side? Well, it's oh, it, yeah, in V. Here, for example, here. Okay, so this is called this is called quantum torus in quantum algebra. And uh, once again, so this right hand side is the quotient of this universal thing. Universal, then we take in invariant. invariant, and then we have one additional relation or no. Uh, no, no. So yes, um I should this wasn't very precise. I should put this. This is part of the definition, which should go here, I guess. Uh -huh. I should specify the relation between M and L. So they the Q commute. Or if you like, you could, yeah, you're right. You could, of course, I could quotient this by that and then take us to an invariant, involution invariant under R at the end. So this is quantum torus. Yes, it is also the non commutative torus. Well, this is also, uh, you know, if you complete it, you will get a certain norm, you will get non commutative torus in non commutative geometry. Yeah, but you would have to specify the star structure. That's right. The star structure is completely nothing. We we don't have a, a star structure. Uh -huh. And in fact, we don't have a norm here. Although, you know, it is, uh, I would say, inspiring to think, uh, you know, what, what would we get? How this interplay, if we did consider some sort of star structure? Well, the star structure in, uh, in non-committed stories is, I guess, that M goes to M inverse. And L go, goes to L inverse, no? Uh, yeah, probably. And so, yes. so sure, we have that. Yes. Uh, we have that. In fact, uh, you know, there is this star structure on the surface. Yes, but you take something which is invariant, and you explain that this is precisely this action. So I'm a little bit confused. It's like saying that those elements are self-adjoint. But this is not the case for generators of the say ordinary non-commutative torus in non-commutative geometry. So. so this is not this is not a non-commutative torus. This is a subalgebra of non-commutative torus. Yes. Yes. This is this uh, okay so this is a little bit tricky. And um, this is a homomorphism or isomorphism or involution, yes, uh, basically involution. This is What's going on here? Not to be confused with star. Any star operator is anti-homomorphism, yes? Mm -hmm. And yeah. those are unitary. Now I should tell you where the, so Taurus has meridian and longitude, and I should tell you when they go. So meridian, well, you can, yeah, meridian will go to M plus M inverse. And you take, if you take um, a longitude, of course, will go to L plus L inverse. Mm -hmm. Now, so, you know, if we take this variable to be root of unity, we can make it into C star algebra. These are unitary, but some of M and M inverse is actually self-adjoint. But why just root of unity? Sorry? Why just root of unity? No, I, I said uh, you, uh, unit, uh, what I meant is that uh, of Q of norm one on the unit. Mm -hmm. For sure, but not necessarily a root of unity. Yeah, that's right. I, I don't think I said that to you. Root of unity yeah. would give uh, at the level of sister algebra something which is Morita equivalent to commutative sister algebra. Yes. Yeah, very nice. Yes. You know, I, I, I meant uh, norm of uh, unit circle. Um, and so these are self adjoint now. Oh. You plus your star is of course self adjoint, yes. So, um, well, I'm looking at my time, but actually, I have last 20 seconds. Yes, and let's see how can I spend those 20 seconds. Well, <laughs> there's much more to say. Uh -huh. uh, there's, there's, a, there's twice as much of this theory. I, mean, I guess I, I, I would need another maybe six hours to finish this theory for SL2. And then there's a theory for SLM. And um, 
And not, not only does the, the scope theory generalizes to SLN, it also generalizes to scale models in which you consider for a surface with boundary, you consider skeins with endpoints. And those endpoints, those endpoints um, will have certain states like i, j, or certain numbers. <clears throat> And this are called consider scan algebras. And then you take a bygone, then this stated scan algebra. And you can do it for SLN, as I mentioned. Turns out to be, it gives a geometric um, model for the quantum algebra OQSLM. Okay. So I might not prefer OSLM Q, but in, in yeah. uh, OQ. I mean if typically we would write SL SLQ and N in parentheses and then O because O is just taking a coordinate ring. Okay. Yes, and then all of all of it. Sure, you're going to write it like this. So, you know, there is, um, when you study pop algebra, there is a lot of diagrammatic calculus around them. You can represent uh, operations, algebraic operations on, on pop algebra, involving pop algebra using diagrams. But this is the first um, description using diagrammatic pictures, diagrams of quantum algebra or QSLN or SLQN. So here, this non commutativity would come from where? Uh, that you, you took uh, marked? Uh... Well, you, you, again, the product is again given by stacking of diagrams. And then the involution is given by flipping it 180 degrees I... and multiplication by some scalar, because we know that uh, involution is not, uh, uh, well, the antipod, sorry, antipod is not an involution. And then uh, there is a, using those states, there's a way to, to split. This, this, it generates a splitting homomorphism. There's a way to split those skeins, those links, into two pieces along an arc. And uh, this gives us the, uh, this gives us the commultiplication, but I have really no time to display it. Yeah, that's like in this of algebra of trees. Of algebra of trees? Of trees, yes. Of trees, yes. I don't know it, so I'm, I'm going to ask you for a reference afterwards. No, con crime. I think I'm out of time, so... But just one last question. Uh, I still don't see, I, I don't quite understand this big trend. For me, it's extremely interesting. Uh, so so what, what is it? Why now uh, you have something non-commutative? Well, because it's stated. I, I like to understand this stated business a bit more. Okay. Well, the non-commutative business appears already on the, on the photos, yes? Uh, if that's what of interest. Ah, so this even necessity to intersect. Right. The moment you, two things intersect, it really depends what, what is on, on the free puncture disk. It was also already non commutative. That's right. right. Yeah, non commutative is absolutely generic behavior. It comes from from the topology of a surface, which was yeah. kinding. Mm. Okay. Okay, I'm I'm very happy. Okay, so let's see. Are there any further questions? BJ, are you again for a question? I'm I, I'm okay. Okay, Good but um, uh, maybe I'm um, the for for this um for, for this last page. Is there any like um R matrix or something involved? Yes, yes, yes. We have also the realization of R matrix. Um.
Yeah, yeah. maybe because it requires a little bit of, um, you know, this is 100 pages paper, which requires a lot of stuff in. But yes, we do have interpretation of, of our matrix. This is sort of a dual language. So so we have interpretation of a, a of, of a core R matrix. But, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I can show a picture. So this core R matrix actually says, it's not of a secondary thing, but it's simpler than R matrix because it's a bilinear form. And how does this bilinear form works? Well, if you have a bidon, you put X here, Y here, you do something like that, and that's an element of there's a scale algebra of a bygone, and then we apply the uh, the co-unit to it, and this is the core R matrix. Uh, yeah, probably requires more words to explain it, but this is the, 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 the geometric definition. Everything is geometric. Okay. Any other questions, BJ, Victor? Um, no, thank you. <laughs> okay, so because it's the last uh, minute of the Simon semester, ask a question now or remain forever silent. Mm. I would like to thank the organizers of this semester <laughs> uh, for all those wonderful lectures and for inviting me in particular. <laughs> Our pleasure. Yeah, no, my, I'll see you here. Okay, so thank you. Now let's thank uh, all the lecturers. So Adam, DJ, thank you so much for the lecture. Okay, great. I stopped recording. Uh, we came to a happy end, I would say. And uh, this was... I.